Good morning, investors. Today we'll start off a little different. I'm going to review the most topical content and then jump into today's trade alert and review our total return over the last several months. Whatever you do, don't call it QE. That's what Powell said laughingly yesterday as he talked about how it's time to resume the organic growth of the balance sheet. Goldman Sachs has been telling us exactly what would happen, funny enough, for the last month. And that would be, uh, most likely, this has not been announced yet, but they've been leaking that the Fed will put around 500 to a trillion dollars immediately into its balance sheet, which will let all the banks escape their bonds, which have huge, huge profits that they cannot really liquidate, because if they did, there'd be a rush for the exit all at once. So again, they've been patiently waiting for the Fed bailout, and it's here. Beyond that, Goldman Sachs is anticipating 30 to $50 billion a month of treasury repurchases where they're going to try to fix the inverted yield curve and make everything grand again. Uh, so normally this happens when, let's pull up a chart of the SPY. Normally this happens in a different order. And it's important to realize the last two financial crises, crises uh, which you know, we may think were major, major sell-offs, uh, these are just mini blips. If you go look at the grand scheme of things, there are really 15 to 30-year depressions in stock prices that you should really be worried about. But if we do go look at the 2000 crisis and the 2008 crisis, these were both caused by the U.S., and the response by the Fed was uh, they were able to predict the recessions before they occurred, despite everyone giving them so much slack. And their strategy was to drop interest rates to zero. And then after that point, uh, if that didn't work, go into quantitative easing. And so in 2008, you can see they dropped rates all the way to zero, had no effect. But once they announced they're going to pile in trillions of dollars, we had the massive takeoff in the SPY. So usually it's after a huge crash that we get this sort of liquidity injected into the markets. And the same case was true for 2000. Uh, what they've learned to do, and you can see in 2000 the crash uh, was much longer and it took them a lot longer to figure out, hey, let's just throw some money at the banks and they'll uh, <clears throat> put all their money back into stocks. So they reacted much quicker in 2008 and you can see immediately after that, assets rallied significantly. So what's happening now? Well, we're doing it at all-time highs. So they are dropping rates very quickly. We've already dropped 50 basis points this year, probably another 50 basis points uh, in October and November are headed our way, maybe even more. It depends on how crazy Trump gets. And we'll talk about the laughable uh, joke from the Chinese with their new trade offer. It's actually less than where we started. So that there's no way that's going to fly. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going into QE at all time high. So it's going to be very hard to bet down on the S&P 500 when we know that the banks are going to be getting out of these bond positions for gigantic profits and have fresh powder to do what? Buy U.S. equities. Uh, on, on the other note, if you do study uh, history and you look at what political campaigns do to help benefit their buddies it's called smash and grab this is what Obama did with his buddy and they go and smash different industries uh, talk about how bad they are get their values dramatically reduced we're talking 50 to 90 percent and then they come in there with these big hedge funds and buy up the assets at pennies on the dollar so what do we see happening in this administration and who is potentially partnered with them? Uh, to me, it looks like perhaps, just perhaps, now we'll know more as time comes along, uh, but it does look like clearly uh, there's trouble with China, obviously, and that's why we have this China trade war. And my expectation is that their equities, if they do remain on the U.S. exchange, are going to be punished severely. And we can see they already have been punished severely, uh, or relatively severely, since the trade war began 
uh, and went from 50 to 50 on FXI down to 40. My expectation is that they are about to get a real beating and be pressured into a trade deal. Time is running out for Trump to close something significant, and if he signed the deal the Chinese are offering, uh, I think that the whole world would be <laughs> laughing at Trump and his chances of an election would be diminished. Now, would the stock market fly up? Sure, it probably would. Uh, so definitely hard to, uh, to gauge the exact moves. They've both been somewhat unpredictable, and that's why our SPY TLT strategy has done so well. But if we look beyond what's obvious and look behind the scenes, I suspect uh, that these Chinese equities are going to get severely punished and all the American banks are going to buy it up on pennies on the dollar and make a huge profit. And so uh, that's what I'm expecting. Let's take another look at the SPY. Now I do want to point out, uh, for if you're investing in stock market right now, and you're a buy and hold investor, you have no bonds, you have very little gold, you have no downside protection, I'm going to guess that from uh, the peak in July, where you're sitting on a nice profit, uh, you're down anywhere from 3 to 5% total in your portfolio, maybe more, it just depends on how risky you were. For, in October alone, you're down about 2.7%, okay? So that's what buy and hold investors have gotten recently. And if we actually uh, go back further in time, and go all the way back to uh, 2018, where the SPY was at 292, well, we're about even, so, uh, two years of investment, you've seen your portfolio likely have a huge crash from October through December, where most likely you're very worried about uh, another 2008 crisis on your hand. And then the Fed came in and bought up treasuries, freed up capital for the banks. They massively bought the S&P 500, and we had a little return. You were up maybe 3% from October of last year, and now you're back to flat. And that's if you just bought and hold and looked the other way and had some quality assets. Now, if you had some riskier stocks, you're likely down uh, considerably. Now, let's just take a quick look at how our strategies performed, and then I'll jump back into the topical news. And so let me zoom in on this. Now, we were sitting on a 1.1% return just a day ago, and that's because the SPY popped back up and the TLT gave back some of its profits. But that's okay. That's the way our strategy is designed to work. The SPY goes down, the TLT goes up. And that's why we have twice as many TLT as SPY. And the, the opportunity for us to make a lot of money is when perhaps the SPY drops significantly, our put option kicks in, which cuts off the losses, and then the TLT flies up significantly higher. So that's how we had such a high return uh, yesterday. Now, we did get some trade hope, which I'll review, and uh, we still remain bullish on the SPY today, at least, and bullish on the TLT. But when you overlap the TLT and the SPY, it just makes it incredibly hard to lose. So you can see... While most investors are just flat or down over these various time periods, our portfolio continues to deliver strong returns with low risk. So in October, we're up half a percent. September, we had a low month, only 0.3% return. August, 1.8% return. Our only losing month is July, negative 1%. And if I do pull up today's trade alert, I summarize it pretty well for you. Negative 2.3% return on the SPY in October. However, our portfolio is up $9,000 for a 0.6% return. And I break down how that profit's generated right here. And from July, the top of July, so the very end of July through today, the S&P 500 is down 3.7%. Meanwhile, our portfolio is up 2.7% total, $37,800 profit. And so the breakdown... Uh, if you just look at the balances, 
from the beginning of October through current, we're down 3,961 on the SPY. The TLT is up 3,996. Now this was up tremendously more yesterday. It's okay, don't worry. When the China trade deal does break down, that TLT is gonna fly higher. And then our SLV position is up $8,900 so far in October. GDX is about flat from where we closed out the, uh, the balance from September through October. Uh, it's up a little bit, so I didn't put that in there. Uh, but again, GDX is another position that will profit from the trade war breaking down. So <clears throat> we'll jump into the exact trade alert in a moment. I do want to go back to my live content. So the most important development is that we went from last December, uh, Powell sitting up there saying, rates, hikes are on autopilot and quantitative tightening will continue uh, into 2019. And then by February, he said, well, maybe not. We're going to pause on this. July, they dropped rates. Uh, last month, they dropped rates. Into this month, they'll most likely drop rates. Now, if Trump does some sort of uh, delay the tariffs and take some agricultural purchases, which I highly doubt, but we're still positioned for him to do so, uh, then <clears throat> most likely we'll just get a 25 basis point cut at the end of the month and this big infusion of cash into the banking system. And they're talking around 500 billion to a trillion dollars one time injection and then maintain around 30 to 50 billion dollars a month. And so their goal is going to be to fix the shape of the yield curve put liquidity into the banks. And you know what they're not saying is that all these banks are trapped in these bond portfolios uh, that they don't want to own. They know they can't sell them without causing a massive uh, rush to the exit. So they've been patiently waiting for the Fed to come in and bail them out. So they'll have a gigantic profit on these t bond positions on the long end of the treasury you're up some 20 to 30 percent year over year. So uh, that's the maximum return they may have on some of these bond positions and the shorter on the curve, a little bit less profit, but still highly profitable. And now they're getting uh, to swap them out to the Fed. So they're not even selling these in the real market. So that's the big news yesterday. That's extremely bullish for U.S. equities as long as we don't have World War III on our hands. Now the bad news is it uh, looks like China has no intentions of creating a trade deal. The recent offer is a total joke. It's actually less soybeans than they were buying before the trade war began. So uh, trying to predict exactly when this will implode on itself is hard. We're still positioned to uh, to profit from the SPY going up on trade hope between now and Friday. We'll take a look at the recent trades. And again, remember, the reason we want to be long the SPY is because we're so uh, set up for some sort of nasty surprise with 60% of our portfolio. So if I do go back to this, you can see I only have 30%, 37% of my portfolio at risk to the S&P 500 having a pullback. And on top of that, I have a put option at 289 so my maximum loss on the SPY is $2 between now and Friday. Meanwhile, if the trade deal breaks down between now and Friday, you can bet your bridges that the TLT, silver, and gold will rally very strongly. And that's 60% of our portfolio. So we're set up in a situation where we're not going to win most likely on all four assets. However, uh, if the S&P 500 goes up, there's little chance that precious metals or bond portfolio will drop very much. And that's because we have, again, the Fed printing massive amounts of money, increasing the money supply. And this isn't just happening in the U.S. This is happening, happening at a grand scale worldwide. So the outlook for uh, treasuries is very strong right now and has delivered almost half of our total profits this year. Precious metals has done very well. My expectation is if the U.S. and China don't get too ugly uh, right now, that the SPY is going to deliver some very handsome results to the upside. Uh, but in the same breath, it's hard to predict Trump's moves. 
and I think there's a high probability he will want to severely escalate the trade war in the month of October uh, to, number one, force the Fed to do dramatic rate cuts and uh, get the maximum quantitative easing. And then two, I think it will shed light on a lot of the drama related to his impeachment. So uh, I think there's good cause for him to take this stance on China very tough and further bury uh, really his number one opponent, which would be Joe Biden. So that's what I'm looking to happen. Let's go back to the live stream. So there's a look at your S&P 500 SPY ETF, and that is 37% of our total portfolio right now. TLT, currently that 30-year treasury is at 2%, and I think realistically it could easily go down to 1.5, which would push uh, which would push at least another probably $15 on the TLT. I'd have to calculate it. Uh, but we could have a lot more upside on the TLT with very little downside risk because we know the Fed is now manipulating the Treasury market and trying to keep its rates uh, at a low rate but still competitive against the rest of the world. So uh, it seems as though the TLT is the safest place to put your cash with all the uncertainty in the market plus the, the Powell put. Now, if we don't get a major escalation in the trade war, this might just trade uh, in this zone without much movement. So that's great for us. It lets us protect against downside risks on the SPY and have the courage to, uh, to be positioned for a massive rally in the SPY. And the SPY is at least $10 undervalued right now. Uh, and I think it's without any sort of crazy news from the U.S.-China trade war breaking down can push much higher uh, now that we're going into QE. GDX is the gold miner ETF that we have 10% of our total portfolio in. In our exact portfolio, that's 8%, and I have a 1% position in Bitcoin and a 1% position in Ethereum. Now, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Uh, if you just have 10% in GDX, you're going to get the same result. All year we played GLD, spot gold, until it got to that crazy $1,500 an ounce price. We're seeing the Chinese and Russians buy up gold at record pace. This is putting a ceiling on the price of gold and making it extremely profitable to be a gold miner. So we love GDX over GLD now that the price has rallied so high. The last 10% of our portfolio, which is optional, is trading SLV on Tuesdays as an income trade. While we're buying and holding GDX, we're not buying and holding the much more uh, smaller market cap of the silver market. Now, this is the silver spot price, and I'm looking for SLV to jump to around $22 to $25, uh, which is highly correlated to the spot price of silver. And at that point, we'll make the same move into the silver mining ETF. Now, there are different companies that specialize in mining silver versus gold, so it does make sense to have that uh, SIV once we get to that point. So for now, we still have a considerable rally uh, to get up to that $22 to $25 price range before I would rotate us into SIV. Now, the only thing that would make me want to get out of gold and silver would be if this whole quantitative easing period we're coming to an end and we're just getting started so uh, expect a nice long rally in these two assets to help uh, increase our profitability and if you do look back to the last time we did quantitative easing it lasted several years and it drove SLV to 4726 and again that was during a period of time when it was small misallocations of capital that had to be cleaned up by expanding the, the, mon the money supply uh, that were all just domiciled in the U.S. primarily. This time around, the picture's much worse. Now we're trying to cover up trillions of dollars that have been misallocated primarily by China. And that's why we can see all of China's trading partners going into recession, primarily Germany, uh, but also South Korea. Uh, so meanwhile, don't forget, yesterday we gave you a trade alert to have a out-of-the-money put option on FXI that's expiring next year. Now, if you're not part of our program, you should call Dean at 505-322-7515 so you can get that exact pick 
This is 1% of our portfolio, but if what I'm predicting happens, that 1% can give our total portfolio a 5 to 10% gain in just the next few months as, again, the, t the, the time for Trump to escalate the trade war is coming near an end. The next election's in November, so from his standpoint, if he wants to raise hell, cause some sort of sell-off in world equities, get the quantitative easing, and then get a trade deal, and then also get the stock market to rally back up, well, he better get this show on the road. Uh, so that's the big question. Is he going to escalate now, or is he going to push this into 2021 and uh, accept some soybeans? I, I don't think he is, so that's why we put on that position. And again, it's a 1% total position uh, that's based on uh, the threat of American pension plans reducing capital flow to China and more and more things that they're doing to put sanctions on. We saw 16 companies that are publicly traded, I believe, uh, sanctioned just yesterday. And there's a lot more the U.S. can do to put pressure on this. But you go back to the Obama administration, do the research. They called it smash and grab. The government smashes a different sector and then their buddies come in and buy it up for cheap. So perhaps that is the big plan uh, with this FXI. And so keep a close eye on that. Dollar remains extremely strong. This indicates that currencies around the world are having trouble. That's because their debt is all denominated in dollars and their currencies are lo losing value against the dollar. So they're having to print more and more money to pay their debts as their economies are uh, feeling the slowdown from China, which has been the growth engine for the last two decades, and they're running out of credit. China gets cut off of outside credit. They cannot continue to expand their bubble. Their money supply has grown a thousand percent in the last decade, uh, which is absolutely insane. Meanwhile, crypto had a bounce today from some positive news about institutional investors wanting to get involved. And again, this is not a huge part of our portfolio, but we have had a substantial gain uh, by playing Bitcoin from December and Ethereum from December. Very large gains. It was trading around 3,500 when we got in and 90. So big profits on those. Uh, meanwhile, let's look at what's going on in the world. Sixers fan was kicked out for putting up this free Hong Kong sign during a game. NASDAQ is tightening the noose on IPOs of small Chinese companies, trying to go public in the U.S. markets. Jeffrey Snyder is a expert at the Fed and the Euro uh, and just talking about how the bond market was not impressed with his speech yesterday and we did see a little sell-off. Um, and from my point of view, it's just uh, the Fed is coming in, letting the banks get out of these huge bond positions for a profit and now they're going to have fresh powder to support equities markets. Here's that yield curve from different time periods. And so you can see right there around the one year to five years where the yield curve is inverted. And so uh, market participants are anticipating that the Fed will try to manipulate uh, those rates to, uh, to get them uninverted. China, this is from Rabobank, China doesn't do... Q openly do QE either. Of course, it just has combined fiscal deficit of around 13% of GDP. That's insane. And a central bank that supports the whole pyramid scheme by repoing these assets as needed. So uh, repo madness is the big word. It's basically the same thing as QE. It's just a revolving free credit line for the banks uh, to borrow money overnight as needed. And so the whole world is going into this phase of QE. Uh, but meanwhile, because of all the free credit, the U.S. equities market looks very strong. And so despite a little bit of a slowdown in job openings, it's still at record levels. 
Uh, here's just a comical joke. Welcome to not Wednesday, not 9, not October, not 2019, after the Fed started not QE4. Of course, they don't want to call it QE4 and scare everyone. Federal Reserve will struggle to convince markets that a resumption of Treasury purchases to avoid future money market turmoil is another round of quantitative easing. Here's the cryptos suddenly spike as Grayscale sees inst institutional interest double. Here's a little piece from Kyle Bass uh, talking about uh, people in the Communist Party putting pressure on different folks. This one is Jack Ma, Alibaba. Uh, they're all agents of the Chinese government. Don't forget how one day Jack Ma was taking pictures with Queen Elizabeth and the next he was fired, forced to give his shares of Baba to five unnamed individuals and forced to publicly declare his Communist Party membership. So that's what happens when you go big in China. You get to give it up to the Communist Party uh, really sad to see the Nets owner, Joe Tsai, so blatantly shine China's shoes. You think that a fortune of $9.5 billion would buy some independence and self-respect rather than remaining a slave to shifting winds in Beijing. And this whole Ukraine-China mess, impeachment mess, is all tied together. And so I think that is one core reason that Trump will benefit from escalating the China trade war uh, because it leads to Joe Biden's son. Uh, number one, uh, in Ukraine, some $8 billion went to Ukraine and was just laundered. Who knows where the money went? Uh, I have my suspicions, but Ukraine has essentially turned into the world's uh, headquarters for laundering uh, government tax dollars, IMF money, and uh, a bunch of corrupt people there, extremely corrupt. <clears throat> Meanwhile, they had a surprise election where a show host fellow took over the presidential uh, lead just by talking about how, uh, how much crime and scandals were going on. Uh, so that was totally unexpected. Meanwhile, Joe Biden's son set up Rosemont Capital. There's about 10 of these different funds and they took billions of dollars from China, went and bought out American companies and transferred the IP back to China. So that is going to really look bad on the Bidens and I think will be a good reason for him to escalate uh, the trade war. China plans to restrict visas for US visitors with anti-China links. So we're continuing to see the decoupling. Secretary Pompeo, today I'm announcing visa restrictions on Chinese government and Communist Party officials believed to be responsible for or complicit in the detention or abuse of Uyghurs. Don't forget the South Park episode. It's hilarious. Uh, it talks about all this as well. This is the Communist Twitter handle. Useless. It has a bigger impact on the U.S. than on China because it will exert almost zero pressure on China. In my opinion, it is a show that some U.S. political and public opinion elites put up for their own needs. Some reports said Chinese delegation will cut short its stay in Washington, but based on what I know, the delegation plans to leave Friday night, which means they will complete the scheduled consultation agenda from a working perspective. This is no different than leaving on a Saturday. Trump got his QE4, and now he's going nuclear in the trade war with China. That is something we will see. John Segro says Ivanka has patents, and he has hotels in there. So yeah, he'd be hurting his own business to go to war with uh, China, John. So that's not a very good argument. China has forcibly detained over 1 million Muslims, Muslims in a brutal, systematic campaign to erase religion and culture in Xinjiang. China must end its draconian surveillance and repression, release all those arbitrarily detained, and cease its coercion of Chinese Muslims abroad. White House expected to tell House Speaker Pelosi later on Tuesday it will exercise its privilege to withhold certain testimony and documents in impeachment inquiry. 
So the Republicans are upset that they want to pull little pieces out of a testimonial and put it on the public uh, without releasing the whole transcript and having uh, consultation. So there's that drama. Powell says Fed contemplating purchases of T-bills won't be QE. Fed will permanently expand its balance sheet and buy treasuries, i.e. QE. But whatever you do, don't call it QE. Quite comical. Powell's not worried about inflation from the tariffs. And now there's more and more rumors that Hillary will run. Uh, the last thing the Democrats want is Elizabeth Warren, as she is uh, really has no friends with the rich people with all the policies she's been preaching. Fed may be doing QE4 next year as it hikes rates as escalating trade war with China sends import prices soaring. That might be true unless the Chinese devalue their currency, which again is what I suspect they will do. Fowles, Powell's Fed Reserve Plan is not ready yet, but will be soon. We just need to hear from JP Morgan how much QE they need, which is a joke, but uh, they are rumored to be the bank that's been using the repo madness. Um, and there's a lot of trouble at we at uh, SoftBank, which has invested in a bunch of highly leveraged tech companies like WeWork. So uh, that may be the source of a lot of this uh, liquidity problems in the market. Chair Powell, why, despite 1.4 trillion in total reserves, did J.P. Morgan refuse to allocate 150 billion of its reserves in the open market? in a riskless operation. They're talking about the overnight lending. Uh, so trust with foreign banks has certainly uh, become very, very untrustworthy, and that's why that repo rate was spiking so high. Here's the projected treasury purchase uh, from Goldman Sachs. And of course, most of the people who work at the Fed or in the top of the administration uh, first worked at Goldman Sachs. That's where they go uh, do their public service, they say. Of course, it's not the truth. QE4 is already the same size as QE1. And they're just looking at how much the balance sheet has been increasing in the last two months. Uh, like I said, the problems of today are much greater than the problems of 2008 or 2000. Navarro says Trump wants a big deal with China. China's not going to give him a big deal that easily. Fed Evans, downside risks to the economy are stronger than upside risks. Hence the QE is in effect. Evans could be there is an argument for a bit more insurance. China demands U.S. reverse decision on blacklisting tech firms, says Muslim Uyghurs in far west Xinjiang live in harmony. No terrorist attacks in the past three years because <laughs> uh, they're all in concentration camps. Tells the U.S. to butt out of Beijing's business commerce ministry statement posted on website. Here's the photo that has been removed from Twitter. Uh, Biden out golfing with the Brisma natural gas CEOs and his son. Of course, he says he doesn't know about his son's business dealings in Ukraine. And uh, here's Ch China's credit impulse. Uh, they've been taking on less credit relatively over the last several years. And uh, that's why we're seeing the global slowdown. Treasuries continue to sell at record low rates. And uh, so this further supports our TLT position. 
I can feel that the Chinese society has low expectations for a real breakthrough in the new round of trade talks. Most people think alternate trade, war trade talks, will be a normal thing between China and the U.S. Plus, people widely think the Trump administration can't honor its commitments. China will take any necessary measures to firmly protect its own interests. Hillary rockets into third place on predicted as rumors swirl over a 2020 run. Now, supposedly, from what I've stud studied, Hillary was actually the tough one on China out of all the Democrats, uh, but had her scheme in Ukraine, uh, which is another reason I think Trump will be motivated to escalate the trade war uh, with all this drama swirling. Nomura fears significant downside risk. They're very good at predicting technical based moves at different price levels. Right now, 287 is the price where they believe CTAs will dramatically switch to sell. Most Americans have paid no attention at all to the developments in China aside from not liking tariffs, but touch basketball and suddenly things get serious. Oh my god, they killed the Nets, you bastards. Uh, this episode is really funny. If you go to YouTube and just type in band in China, B-A-N-D, like a band, not band, B-A-N-N-E-D. Uh, really funny episode, covers all the hot points. And now South Park is banned in China. Uh, Winnie Pooh scene was a little gruesome. Uh, Winnie Pooh was supposed to be... Uh, was Winnie the Pooh as President Xi, and then Obama as Tigger walking around. That went viral. They banned Winnie the Pooh. And so uh, there's a pretty violent scene in that episode about that. Here's your 287 price level uh, from Nomura. And meanwhile, the Hong Kong protests continue to escalate Chinese army is ready to step in against rioters. Carrie Lam warns for the first time. Meanwhile, we're having bank uh, ATM runs, and if you're following Kyle Bass, uh, he thinks they're gonna have to let go of the Hong Kong peg. So the futures trade on shorting the Hong Kong dollar could be extremely profitable. Right now, all the money's been made playing uh, CNH in the futures market, shorting it. Uh, in the last year, you could have made quite a fortune from that. In our boot camp, we are intending to play that soon. Uh, I just need to see. Uh, I need to see that tariffs are going to go in place in December, and maybe even some more tariffs. I've been waiting on that. <clears throat> I was suspecting that would happen first, and then a sell-off in their equity second. But now we're seeing this week more and more threats about uh, cutting capital flows to Chinese equities. So I think we may see both these happen. Uh, pretty quickly here. Here's your odds on the presidential nomination. We even saw Andrew Yang speaking out against China and the NBA scandal this week. Uh, we've seen Elizabeth Warren bashing China. Um, so clearly China is running out of buddies. They had bought out Joe Biden for sure and his chances have been completely demo demolished in the last several weeks from this Ukraine scandal. Uh, this is where a lot of people are predicting the next downturn could sell off to, uh, just with technical analysis. I don't like to use technical analysis to make uh, directional predictions, but if we do get the fundamental news that causes a fear, uh, then I like to use technical analysis to try to figure out where we might end up. So. If we get some horrendous escalation in the trade war, uh, the next level to look for would be significantly lower on the spy. Now, in our program, that's very easy to profit from uh, safely with our strategy, so we're just patiently waiting. And this whole drama was 
uh, because the Republicans want to release the whole transcript and not just let Schiff pick out little pieces uh, because they control the House. All right, that's a wrap of the live feed. Let's take a look at uh, our total program strategy returns one more time and then we'll let everyone go. We have our paid member uh, webinar coming up shortly. Daily on-the-go income trade alerts. Target return of investment is 1% a month. And we've only had one losing month of negative 1% with an average. We're down to 1.6. We were at 1.7% average yesterday. For every $100,000 invested, our goal is to generate a $1,000 per month profit. Income and safety, not growth or speculation. Our simple four ETF portfolio is extremely diversified and all you'll need for retirement. Simplify your holdings, reduce your risk, get better results with less work, and weatherproof your retirement portfolio. My promise to you, I will protect your assets and show you how to pick the low hanging fruit. Our put options hanging right below the SPY and TLT ETF make it impossible to lose very much money, period. Remember, every $50,000 you deposit at your broker gives you $100,000 of buying power. So that will double our monthly return. Here's the way we recommend allocating your capital. 100 shares of the SPY. Now I will note that I only have a two to one ratio of the TLT to SPY. And that's just been a function of me uh, being too lazy to go change our portfolio. So if you've been following this exact setup, your returns are probably about uh, 10 to 15% higher than mine. And I do recommend this as the best setup in the current current setup in the market. Now, if we get some sort of positive trade deal, uh, we might want to go back to that two to one ratio on the TLT, and uh, but that's just highly unlikely at this point. So you have 100 shares of the SPY, that costs 30 grand, 600 shares of SLV for about 11 grand, 300 shares in the TLT for about 45 grand, and then you have a buy and hold position of $10,000 in GDX. This setup makes you very rock solid in our current market conditions. If you want to throw out the Tuesday trade, drop down to a 1 to 2 ratio on the SPY to TLT, and then 200 shares of GDX. This costs you about 66 grand to build. Uh, if you use your buying power, then you'd only need to deposit 33 grand. If you want to make some insane profits, during a period of quantitative easing, you're gonna see some more volatility, but this setup will really rock. You can put 15,000 into your portfolio, use the buying power, follow our program. You get 900 shares of SLV, 100 shares of TLT, and 100 shares of GDX. Now, if you have not upgraded your account yet, call Dean. He's an expert options trader. He can really get you set straight, 505-322-7515. We have our paid only webinar coming up in 10 minutes. So if you're a paid member, don't forget to join that. We'll be talking shop, talk about what we'll do on the SPY if we get the trade escalation I'm expecting. Tomorrow's our freebie webinar. Remember you get the email to access the webinar at 12 and then the webinar starts at one. So just look in your email for that. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the little bell. Here's our disclaimer. If you want to pause that and read it, go for it. Uh, now I do want to throw out that if you go to the description box, you have a link to everything we've covered today, including a link to our advisory, our boot camp, pricing options. Every trade alert we've ever issued is up for public review. It's not password protected. Our track record is up for public review. And the articles from today's uh, publication are in this doc link right here. And a quick little look. This is the updates page where you can see every update we've ever posted. So we have nothing to hide. Complete transparency. This is the summary of what you get when you join our advisory. If you click to order, it will first qualify you and ask you a bunch of questions to make sure you really have what it takes to follow the program. So check that out. If you go to this page, it reviews our boot camp. Bootcamp has special trades, not in the advisory, primarily trading the futures market. So if you want to short the Chinese currency, that trade is probably coming in the next few weeks, maybe as early as Friday. So definitely consider joining our bootcamp. And if you want to look at pricing options, 
this is the page to check out. We have a financing plan that spreads out your payments over 20 months. You can get the boot camp and advisory as one combo pack and be set for life. You'll have webinars four days a week, trade alerts five days a week, and we will take great, great care of you. So thanks again, and don't forget to call Dean. Let's get you signed up and take care of you in retirement. Now let me just check if we have any questions out there. Any questions from members currently? Today's trade on the SPY was very similar to, uh, to the last one. We're still bullish on the SPY despite uh, the odds of a trade deal being low. We just don't want to get hammered if, if there is a trade deal announced or even just a, a massive amount of trade hope between now and Friday. Uh, we don't want to uh, get smashed in every part of our portfolio. So again, uh, that's how we, we do it. There's little risk of a sell-off in the TLT or gold because of quantitative easing. And the market's geared now to start slowly piling money into the S&P 500 uh, unless we get some serious fearful headlines out of the trade war. So that's our setup going into Friday. All right, guys, thank you so much for your time. And again, we got our paid webinar coming up in a few minutes and the freebie webinar tomorrow for everyone.